remove Sunforger, get a Manamorphose, cast it, equip Sunforger, remove it, Manamorphose, cast it, equip it, remove it. Need some new Zendikar Rising cards? You can get them today from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just head over to cardkingdom.com. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. And we have a spicy modern deck to play this week. We're playing Naya Sunforger. That's right. Commander All-Star Sunforger making its way into modern in this ridiculous equipment aggro combo craziness deck. So anyway, we're going to talk about this deck. Jump right into a league. See if Sunforger can actually make the leap from Commander All-Star to modern playable? Modern All-Star? Modern Stable? I don't even know, but let's talk about it. Jump into the games and find out. So our deck, it's built around Sunforger. And to find Sunforger, we got Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic can actually grab Batter Skull, but really, most of the time, what we're going for is Sunforger. In Sunforger, it's this really strange equipment. Three mana, it gives an equipped creature plus four plus zero, which is more relevant than it sounds. The big deal, though, is you can pay a red and a white, unattach it, search your library for a red or white instant card convert a mana cost four or less and play it without paying its mana cost uh, it normally costs three to equip so essentially all together you're paying five mana three to equip two to unequip to tutor up a red or white instant convert a mana cost four or less and that is the ability that our deck is really designed around so the trick of our deck is we're not really planning on paying that three mana to equip sunforger what we really want to be doing is equipping it to fervent champion fervent champion happens to make it so equipped abilities that target it cost three less so that means we can equip sunforger on fervent champion for free we do sometimes attack with fervent champion that is part of our plan like a sunforger on a fervent champion making it into a 5-1 first strike that's actually a pretty legit attacker uh, especially thanks to the first strike but the real deal with this is we're looking to combo off with fervent champion and sunforger so how do you actually combo off with sunforger and fervent champion and first off we need them each on the battlefield and then really we need about four mana to make it work so this is a turn four ish combo although we can win easily without the combo as well so here's the idea we get down our Fervent Champion. We get down our Sunforger. We have four mana. We equip our Sunforger for free. We use two of our mana to tutor up a Mana Morphos with Sunforger. Then we re-equip, unequip, get another Mana Morphos. The end result's going to be we get all four Mana Morphoses. That's essentially free since they give us back the two mana it takes to tutor them up. Plus, we get to draw a bunch of extra cards. So that's four tutors. Then we use our last Mana Morphos mana to get Fist of Flames. Fist of Flames, two mana red instant that lets us draw a card and and gives a creature plus one plus zero when trample for each card we've drawn. So we've drawn one card for our turn. We've drawn four for Manamorphoses. We've drawn one for Fist of Flames. My finger counting is really horrible, but that gives us six cards drawn. We've drawn six cards. So that means our Fervent Champion is going to be a 7-1. Then we put Sudforger on our Fervent Champion, making it a 11 power creature. Then we can maybe use like Sajiri Shelter or something if we need to, to give our creature protection to get in even more damage. But that essentially lets us attack for 11. Then, to finish out the game, we use our last two mana to use Sunforger one more time to grab Kazool's Fury, our new MDFC fling, fling the Fervent Champion at our opponent. That's going to give us somewhere around 18 damage. So if we've dealt any damage before this, if our opponents played a Shockland untap, fetched a couple of times, they are just dead on the spot. The other way we could do this is instead of ending our chain with Kazool's Fury, we can do all these shenanigans, get a chance for glory, to give us an extra turn, make all of our creatures indestructible, get in the big Fervent Champion attack, and then get a whole other turn of attacking and Sunforder shenanigans to kill our opponent. So that's the combo of the deck. Although, really, we often just use Sunforger for value. We can use it to grab Path to Exile, Lightning Helix for removal, and Aladrami's Call, which is super sweet in this deck. Aladrami's Call is essentially a way we can use our Sunforger to tutor up creatures. So we can use it to find our Stoneforge if we need to, our Fervent Champion, but we can also just start 
start tutoring up creatures, like give her roots for protection, make Manic Channeler to draw some cards and be a big body, Phoenix of Ash for his surprise, hasty, evasive clock in the air, Scavenging Goose for Graveyard Hate and Life Gain, Skyclave Evaporation for more removal, Magus of the Moon to jank people out. So Sunforger just does everything in this deck, and we can't even do it without Fervent Champion. It's obviously at its best with Fervent Champion because of the free equipping, but we can't just go like Sunforger value. Sometimes we stick it on a Scavenging Goose and get a Path Exile to kill your thing and attack you. So even though the combo is by far the most spectacular and sweet thing the deck can do, we also can just win like this really weird, weird, weird Sunforger value deck as well. As far as the mana base, we talked about a couple of MDFCs in our deck. Otherwise, fetch lands, shock lands, basic lands, a couple of horizon lands. In the sideboard, we're built around one thing primarily, but a couple of things really. So we have a ton of creatures because we can tutor them up with Eladrami's Call. So for combo, Gaddictig, Thalia. For control, we have Voice Resurgence. Goblet Crate Maker gives us removal for small creatures, colorless stuff, No Mage Shepherd for artifacts, Core Firewalker for mono red primarily, burn style decks, Remorseless Cleric for our graveyard. Then we have a few weird ones. Emrakul the Eon Stored, we literally cannot cast it. We do not have enough mana sources in our deck that we can ever get to 15 mana. We can't put it into play. Why is it in our sideboard? The answer is, it is our tech to beat mill decks. We bring it in against mill, we hope we don't draw it, and we just let our opponent mill it over. It shuffles our graveyard back into our library, then our opponent mills us, it shuffles back in again. So it's our one card combo for beating mill decks. Boil is actually hilarious, because we can tutor it up with our Sud Forger against our item. Ilzia Grove, nine lives, good against Belcher, combo decks built around dealing one big source of damage, and that is the ridiculousness of Naya Sun Forger for Modern. That's our bunch of brew deck for today. Let's jump into a league, see if this ridiculous combo equipment value plan can actually work in the format. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit with the wrap up. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are playing. Sunforger combo in modern. It's like it's like a commander deck, but it, ooh, all right. This I like. This is turn one fervent champion combo piece number one. Turn two stoneforge to get our sunforger, and then off to the races. Hopefully, well, mountain and fervent champion get in for one. Ship the turn. Our opponent is a Lurus deck, so Thoughtseize taking batter uh taking stoneforge is a possibility. Although I guess, like, two Fervent Champions can also just do work. Potentially. Bobble, bobble. Vernon Catacombs. Cracks it. For Blood Crypt. Untapped. And cracks the bobble. And thought sees. Alright, so this has got to be, I assume, taking Stoneforge. Yeah, Stoneforge down. Opponent can draw a couple cards. So now we need to find a Sunforger somehow. Well, we will play Fervent Champion. Windswept Teeth. Hit our opponent for four, which unfortunately is the shadow range, but we'll see. Opponent, Bloodstain Mire. Cracks it down to nine. Mountain. Oh boy. Lava Dart into Lava Dart, maybe? Ugh, so opponent has two Lava Darts. Okay. Well, that's not ideal. So now we're going to need to draw more. Ugh. Yeah, that's pretty good against X1s, isn't it? Well, now we need to draw some... Ooh. Hmm. Well, okay. Magmatic Channeler. Stomping Grounds tapped. So, opponent's not making it easy to combo, but if this lives and we get to start drawing cards, that would be good. Burn Catacombs. Opponent could also have, like, Liliana or something. Cracks it. Or just Fatal Push. Lightning Bolt. Gets a Swamp. And... All right. Kills the Channeler. Well, I guess we cast this Manamorphose to see if we can draw a threat. Well, okay... I mean, Fervent Champion is going to die to Lava Dart, which, oh, these Lava Darts are so good against our plan. Opponent drops to seven. Yeah, these Lava Darts are really good against Fervent Champions. <laughs> that is the drawback of the plan. <laughs> Matchups like this. Found it. Uh, finds another Thought Seize. Drops to five. So our best bet might be to draw just like running burn spells. The problem is this Lurus is eventually going to take over the game. If we... Uh, so we got to kill our opponent or find a way to deal with the Lurus. Uh, so we draw the Sunbait Canyon, but a smidge on the late side since... Hmm. Since our Batter Skull already gone. Opponent flashes back the Lava Dart. Well, I think we're just going to pass. Well, hmm. Yeah, let's just pass. 
We could have Sunbay Canyon main phase, which might have been better. Opponent, Verdant Catacombs. Gets the Lurus, so next turn Lurus is coming. Well, come on, good draws. Crack the canyon. Eladrami's call. Hmm. The question is, what do we want? So we could Magus of the Moon. Opponent would have to crack this for a Swamp to Lurus? We could Phoenix of Ash, get in for damage. Skyclave Apparition. We could Stoneforge, although with our Batter Skull gone. We're getting Stoneforger, which isn't nearly as exciting. Hmm. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? Scavenging use is interesting, and it can fight through our opponent's stuff eventually, but we only have one green source at the moment, so it doesn't shut off all the bobbles right away. Unless we draw another green source. Um, hmm. Oh, this is tough. Tough decisions. All right, take Stoneforge. Untap. Play Stoneforge. Tutor up a Sunforger. Play Sunforger. Pass the turn. All right, opponent, do your worst. So our opponent gets to play Lures, start drawing extra cards. Unfortunately, our opponent's really good at sniping Fervent Champions. As we, uh, <laughs> as we learned... Opponent cracks down to four, gets a blood crypt, tapped, untaps. I mean, I guess the other question is, can they deal with the Sunforge? Because if not, we can equip and activate it, which is good. Swift Spear, okay. And Luris, okay. Can get back a bobble. Okay. Opponent cracks it, peaks, draws, gets it, hits us, I assume. Or maybe they stand defense because they don't want to block with Luris. So we can put our opponent to one, but we can't quite win. Well, one, two, three. Equip Stoneforge. And I think we just got to do this now. So unattach. Lightning Helix. Get rid of Luris. Pass the turn. All right, so we shut down the card advantage engine at least. Opponent has Bobble again. And we are at 20, and our opponent's at 4, so maybe over the course of a few turns, if nothing goes wrong, we can just helix our opponent out. Opponent cracks, gonna draw an extra card. Ooh, goes to 3. Okay, that's good. That means a... Wow. That's greedy. That means a lightning helix is lethal. Alright, opponent hits us. Down to 18. Draws a card. Well, uh, equip. I'm assuming this means our opponent must have removal. Opponent has a bolt to stay alive. Okay, well, we will play Stoneforge. Get another Sunforger past the turn. We need one Sunforger activation. That's all we need to finish this game. Can we get it is another question. We could also draw a creature big enough to just Fury. <laughs> Found it. Thought seizes. Goes to one. I mean, the question is still, can they answer... Uh, they gotta keep answering our equip creature forever. We just need one single turn. An opponent scoops it up, does not have the answer, just takes a peek at our hand and gives up. All right, well, that was not the dream because our opponent's really good at killing a uh, fervent champion, but we got there with the slow, st <laughs> the slow plan. Uh, all right, what do we have that's good against our opponent's deck, if anything? So opponent's red, black, Luris. Hmm. So, I like a, uh, I like the Emrakul mill. <laughs> just in case we run into mill, we just bring an Emrakul and we're like, gotcha. Um, all right, remorseful cleric in. Maybe a crate maker in. Nine lives. Do we want nine lives? That does. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. 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 The other question is, do we just have to give up on the combo? Since our opponent... I think we can go down the Magus of the Moon. Do we have to just give up on the combo because our opponent can kill Fervent Champion so easily? I mean, I guess if we can get down a Giver of Runes, we can uh, potentially protect it. And that is the most exciting thing our deck can do. So we probably, uh, probably don't want to give it up altogether. Uh, Alright, so Channeler in. Thraben Inspector, no. Core Firewalker, <sighs> probably not. Voice, probably not necessary. Nine lives I could see bringing in. Although I'm worried about the lava darts. That's a quick way to add counters. Let's just try it like that. Let's take the light touch <laughs> and still see if we can combo off. I mean, it worked there. We just got our opponent low enough on life that we were able to 
able to burn them out eventually. Ooh, okay. Well, this I like mostly because I think Phoenix of Ash could actually be really good in this matchup. Blood Crypt. Untapped. Monastery. Schwiftspia. We don't have any removal for this, unfortunately. Opponent gets in, hits us. Well, Arid Mesa. Crack it. For a mountain. And a fervent champion. And get in for one. Oh, opponent. Combat gets in, hits us. I wonder if Core Firewalker is worth it. Down to 17. Bloodstained Mire. Opponent passes. No, wind swept teeth. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Crack wind swept teeth. Get a planes. Stoneforge Mystic. And I think we just take... Ugh, I think we just take Batter Skull. I know it's not the combo, but I just don't have any faith that we're going to be able to combo off through the Lava Dart deck. <laughs> so I think we need to go for Batter Skull first, and then go for the combo second if we get a chance. Bonet Catacombs. Gets in. Hits us. Can they kill the Stoneforge? Yes. Okay. Down to 14. Phone passes. Hmm. Well, let's... All right, let's... Windswept Heath. Crack it. Get a Forest. Metamorphose. And... Phoenix of Ash. Go to combat. Attack. Phone down to 13. Phone cracks down to 12. Untaps. Thossies. I wonder if we get punished for fetching out all basics. It's been good for maintaining our life total, but we can't, like, give our rooms and Remorseful Cleric next turn, unless we draw land, which is slightly awkward. Opponent's really thinking on this Thought Seize. All right, takes Lightning Helix. Bloodstained Mire cracks it down to nine. Swamp. And Luris. Cool. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can put our opponent to one if our opponent attacks and we chance for glory. All right, opponent gonna pass. We draw. And we draw the land. All right, well, Arid Mesa, crack it. Get a Plains, Giver of Runes, Remorseful Cleric, hit ya. Down to seven past the turn. All right, so our opponent can lure us, but they don't really have anything to do with it at the moment. Plays a Bloodstained Buyer. Luris, okay. Nothing to cast from the graveyard at the moment. Cracks down to six. There's actually a chance we can get a chance for glory win here. Tap land. Opponent. Passes. Ooh, and the helix. Well, go to combat. And a post scoops it up? Okay! Our janky beats actually worked. <laughs> Our opponent made it hard to counter, or hard to combo, because of all their removal and discard. But, sometimes your modern deck just plays <laughs> Fervent Champion into Remorseful Cleric into Phoenix of Ash and beats people down. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, that wasn't the combo, but we'll take it. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> oh, goodness, modern. Alright, well, on to the next one. Alright, much brew about nothing time. We are Sunforger comboing <laughs> in modern. Hopefully, we'll see. Maybe just beating down with janky creatures. <laughs> Uh, this hand... Hmm. So opponent's a Lurus deck. I think we actually keep this. So we're not super close to comboing, but we do have removal, so we're not going to get janked out by Lurus most likely, or like a... a Death Shadow. It's going to for our opponent. And Phoenix of Ash is an interesting threat. Unfortunately, no green mana at the moment. Blood Grip, untap down to 17, and Monastery, Schwiftspia. Opponent gets and hits us. Is this the same deck we just played against? I think it is. Um, planes, go. Opponent, combat. Gets and hits us. Down to 18. And, ooh, passes, okay. Well, Arid Mesa, go. Opponent, combat. Gets and hits us. Mutagenic growth. Um, are we gonna let this go? Yeah, let's let it go for now. It's e it's possible we get blown out if we try to kill it here. So opponent gets in with a swift spear. We'll crack this. Grab a stomping grounds. Tapped. Untap. Let's helix swift spear. Main face. Opponent has apostles blessing. All right. Well, I mean, opponents, I don't know what they're doing, but we'll play the land past the turn. Opponent's got a lot of interesting protection, I guess. Opponent, combat. Gets and hits us. Down to 12, we untap. Well, let's... Lightning Helix. 
All right, finally managed to kill something. Play the forest past the turn. I think we would like to make this Magmatic Channeler a 4-4 before we cast it, if we can. Opponent, Bazin, still on one land. All right, we will spend a life to Eldrami Skull. Take a Stoneforge Mystic. Untap. Stoneforge Mystic. Grab a ugh, Batter Skull, I think. I think it's still Batter Skull. Play the tap, lad. And, yeah, let's just... Actually, you know what? Let's run out Channeler. Run out Channeler. Pass the turn. If our opponent kills it, I think that's okay, like, because that means Stoneforge lives. So opponent bolts our Stoneforge. And we have the mana that we can just cast Batter Skull. Swift Spear. Sure. Opponent passes. Well, let's... Hmm. Sunforger. Let's Magmatic Channeler. Discarding Phoenix of Ash. Take Magmatic Channeler. Play Magmatic Channeler. Sunbait Canyon. And pass the turn. Still trying to hold off on pathing because our opponent's so light on lands. All right, Bobble. Opponent, combat. No attacks. Sacks a Bobble. Well, let's take a land. Draw a card. All right, Manamorphos is good. Opponent gets to draw. Manamorphos is going to turn on our channelers, though. Uh, so, Manamorphos. Play Scavenging Ooze. Eat a Swift Spear. Eat a Stone Forge. Go to combat. Start attacking with our 4-4s. Four like, now I really like where we're at. Magmatic Channeler is proving their worth here. We could also be drawing cards with them, but, I mean, this beatdown seems pretty good. Opponent, jump time. Down to nine. I don't know how you get out of this. That looks like game to me. All right, opponent finally finds land number two, but is it just too late? Seems likely. There's a Death Shadow. And a Death Shadow. Well, we will path a Death Shadow. And win. And about it, scoops it up. All right, so it is a Death Shadow deck, a very aggressive Death Shadow deck. This is probably the, the eight Shadow deck, but that worked. So what do we have that's good against Death Shadow? I can see the Thalia being worth it. Oh, opponent's super aggressive. Nine lives, maybe? Remorseful Cleric, meh. Firewalker, the problem is it's not good against Death Shadows. It's good at blocking Swift Spears, but not Death Shadows. Maybe a Thalion and Nine Lives going down. Magus of the Moon. And, like, Thalia does slow down our combo, but it's probably still worth it. Well, actually, maybe we don't. Maybe we just, uh, maybe we just Nine Lives. That might be better. Both Nine Lives? Hmm. All right, let's go. <sighs> Magmatic Channeler was sweet that game. All right, we'll go down one Channeler. Go up the two Nine Lives, try it like that. Against this build, it feels like our opponent's going all in on building, like, one or two big creatures. Death Shadow, uh, the new kicker Death Shadow thing, Monastery Swift Spear. Well, all right, we can put our nine lives to the test. Uh, opponent, Blood Crypt, untapped, and Soul Scar Mage. Well, Windswept Teeth, crack it, get a Plains, and Giver Rooms, go. Uh, opponent, Bloodstained Mire, cracks it, Blood Crypt, untapped. And Swift Spear. Sw oh, hmm. All right, so maybe maybe it is worth bringing in the core Firewalkers. This has a lot more red than I was expecting. <laughs> All right, we're gonna maybe we'll bring in a core Firewalker. All right, so we're taking a bundle here on turn two. Good God. All right, yeah. And we don't really have anything to do. Hmm. Yes, yeah, isn't great. Opponent gets to draw an extra card. All right. Well, Stomping Grounds untapped. Helix the Soul Scar Mage. Opponent has mutagenic growth in hand. Okay. Well, uh, I guess we pass. Oh, we're in we're in a very very sketchy spot here. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Opponent goes to combat. Gets in. Hits us for a bunch. Are we dead somehow? Mutagenic growth two, down to six, and a death shadow. Hmm. Uh, what can we possibly do to get out of this? Is there anything? Well, all right, I guess we got to play nine lives, but our opponent has so many one drops, I'm not actually sure this helps us. How can we win? So I think our hope is that nine lives can buy us enough time that we can maybe set up this Unforger combo if our opponent has nothing else going on. Like, next turn, we can Eladrami's Call out for Vent Champion. Then the next turn, we can Sunforger. Is there any chance we can keep 
the counters off the nine lives, though. Yeah, this was a frightfully aggressive start. Probably will bring in Firewalkers for Game 3 after what we've seen here. Opponent, combat. Gets in, hits us, and passes. Um, well, let's Manamorphose. Oh, we draw the Fist of Flame. That's not ideal. Eladrami's Call. <sighs> Fervent Champion. Play it. Pass the turn. Yeah, we might be losing to our own nine lives here. Opponent just managed to go super wide. And fizzle our removal spell. Was, that was a big issue. Opponent, big attack. Oh, we will block. Pro black. Get some more counters. Uh, up to seven. Opponent, blood crypt, untapped. Scourge, another threat. Eladrami's call, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So nine lives didn't do much, although we might... Uh, Maybe we bring in the... Hmm. Maybe we bring in the Firewalkers. Nine lives might not be enough here. Let's bring in the Firewalkers. And see if Firewalkers... Maybe they can save us. Go back down the nine lives. And go down... Oh, the Phoenix of Ash? I do like the evasiveness of Phoenix of Ash. All right, go down the Phoenix of Ash. Run it like that. All right. All right, all right. We're on the play, which is good. One of these days, we're going to get the combo, and it's going to be sweet. Uh, will it be today? I don't know. But being on the play should be helpful with a decent hand. And hopefully the core Firewalkers, like, yes, they don't stop Death Shadow, and they don't stop Scourge of the Skyclaves. But they do kind of stop Scourge of the Skyclaves a little bit if we can keep our life total high enough. So maybe, maybe that'll be enough. Like, life gain is relevant here. Because if we can keep our life total above 20 against a super aggressive deck, our opponent can't scourge. And then they just got Death Shadow. And now we just got to deal with Death Shadow with our paths, essentially. That's the that's the hope and dream. But well, we get to play first. All right, opponent. Uh, all right. We got the Firewalker. Well, Prismatic Vista. Crack it. Grab a Planes. And Giver of Rooms. Go. I mean, this hand has some resiliency, at least. Polluted Delta. Cracks it. Blood Crypt, untapped. And Thoughtseize. Well, I'm guessing our opponent has to take the Firewalker. We'll see, though. Yep, takes Firewalker. Passes. Ooh, that's another one. That is a another one. So, Whipsaw Teeth, crack Whipsaw Teeth. Grab a Sacred Foundry, untapped. Core Firewalker. Pass the turn. Draw what they thought sees. Gotta draw what they thought sees. All right, opponent. That might be a problem for you. Giver of Ruins could give it pro-black. It already has pro-red, so it's going to be tough for our opponent to kill. They're going to have to slog through these Giver of Ruins. Okay, opponent, Lightning Bolts, Giver of Ruins. We will gain a life. Pro-black to be safe. Bobble. Cracks it. Another bobble. Another bobble. Opponent passes, draws a card. Well, we will play a Fervent Champion. Gain a life. Opponent cracks a bobble. Giver of Ruins. Go to combat. Attack ya. Opponent bolts the giver of runes. Okay. Yep. Well, we'll see. Opponent's going to draw a bunch more cards because these bobbles. But we're still at 19 at the moment. Opponent draws an extra card. Not sure why they save that bobble. Opponent. Agadim. All right. Opponent does not want to spend the life. Swift Spear. Sure. Back up to 20. And dismembers the Firewalker. All right, sure. Opponent hits us down to 18. Come on, threat. Threat would be good. We draw. Planes. Well, go to combat. Attack our opponent. Hit our opponent down to five. Play the planes past the turn. Oh, this is super close. Opponent gonna cash in their bobble to draw a card oh can we close it out we need a couple points of damage or another lightning helix would do it well we made our opponent fight through a bunch of our protection stuff which i guess was good opponent draws a card crash through to draw a card if given a chance we would much prefer to send this helix at our opponent's face but i also think we got to save the path for death shadows Okay, there's a Death Shadow. Opponent. Scalding Tard. Well, we will path Death Shadow. Untap. Ooh. All right, well. Sunforger. Equip is your last card of removal spell. 
Go to combat. The synergy's paying off, maybe. <laughs> Ooh, go attacking. Opponent chumps. Okay. Okay, this is it. It all comes down to this. I think our opponent knows about this helix in hand from their bobbles. Cracks down to four. Mountain. Sunbay Canyon, I assume, to draw a card. Two cards in hand. They gotta answer the Fervent Champion or they're dead to our Sunforger. Well, combo. We don't even need the combo, but... Okay, opponent does draw the answer. Oh my goodness, opponent. And now they can get... Ooh, Scourge of the Skyclaves. Oh, that's... That's fine. Well, we will Lightning Helix our opponent. Kill the Scourge. <laughs> there is a drawback. There is a drawback. <laughs> we killed it. We killed it with the Lightning Helix, not even targeting it. That was... <laughs> oh, that's the, the Nightmare. Vote it. Gets the Lurus. The, the question is, do they have instant speed removal? Well, we will play Fervent Champion. An opponent scoops it up. Scoops it up! Sunforger Fervent Champion getting the job done, taking down <laughs> the Death Shadows. Apparently the deck's popular, but all right, all right, it's working. That was sort of a Sunforger win. That Sunforger forcing our opponent to jump block with Swift Spear. It was good. We didn't get to combo off, but it was still good. All right, sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are Sunforgering. <laughs> Sunforge combo in modern and yeah, this hand doesn't look bad uh we will play land and give river runes like in theory we have the sun forger we can eladrami's call up fervent champion and then maybe go to town that's our hope anyway oh the, oh that's fervent champion hmm how do we do this all right let's stomping grounds untapped and stone forge since we already have a sun forger will take a batter skull past the turn. So now we have two pathways forward. We have Fervent Champion, which we can maybe combo with, and we also have batter skull to beat down with. Pluto Delta for our opponent. Um, well, play Fervent Champion. Arid Mesa, crack it. Grab a Plains. Stoneforge Mystic. Sunforger. Equip and get in for five. All right, so I think we might be set up to win next turn, depending on what our opponent can do. Opponent cracks. We have Giver of Runes for protection. Hollowed Fountain tapped. All right, I mean, if our opponent can't do something really good here, we can hopefully just combo with Fervent Champion and win. All right, opponent, what do you got? What do you got? The Sunforger beatdown is here, Misty. I mean, we're kind of hoping our opponent just Uros. I think that's the, the best case scenario here. Teferi Time Raffler. Okay. Does this ruin our day? Opponent bounces Sunforger. All right, so I think we can still do this. So we get to Sunbake Canyon. Put Sunforger into play. Equip Sunforger. So let's see. We hit our opponent for five. Yeah, this works. So we go to combat. We... We have to kill Teferi first, right? I think? I'm pretty sure. Oh, if I'm wrong, then yell at me, but I, I assume this triggers on the stack, so you can't cast the spell. Well, we get in, kill Teferi, hit our opponent. So I actually don't think we win this turn. Okay, I think we just have to pass. Yeah, we have to pass. We can't actually win because of how this played out. We needed four mana. We need to be able to Manamorphose, 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 Fists of Suds into Fling opponent planes and wraths all right so we just sunforger unattach chance for glory yeah the trigger is definitely still on the stack and opponent -hoo 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 -hoo! chance for glory no one expects the chance for glory <laughs> got him got him got him all right that was sweet that wasn't the full-on combo, but we still got to see the power <laughs> of the Chance for Glory uh, kill. So we will bring it against this control deck. Boil, Gaddix, and Voice of Resurgences. We will go down probably a couple paths. Um, a couple of paths. Maybe a Magmatic Channeler. And... Hmm, do we care about Magus of the Moon? It could be good against our opponent's deck. Ugh, how many paths do we actually cut? Because they probably have Uro. 
And a unimpeded Uro would just beat us. Potentially. Maybe we can't cut all the paths? Hmm. What can we cut, though? Skyclave Apparition seems good. Maybe we keep two paths. Magus of the Moon, reasonable. Phoenix of Ash seems decent. Chance for Glory just saved our day. And maybe we go down Helix. Maybe we go down two Helixes. Yeah, that's probably... That's probably fine. If it wasn't for Uro, I would just cut paths and keep Helixes, but... There's kind of weird pressure, because we want the Helixes to kill Planeswalkers, but then we also don't want to just get janked out by Uro. That would be a disaster. Ugh. Yes, and is all the cards we never want to draw, and we want to tutor up with <laughs> Sunforger. So we'll mulligan. Well, okay. This hand's not exciting, really, but I guess we keep it and put a Planes to the bottom? Hmm. Well, we'll see. Misty, opponent passes. Somehow draw the only other Planes in our deck awkward uh well we will get a mountain firmament champion opponent cracks yeah, this is very land heavy now i do like this phoenix of ash though like path is an issue but it's resilient to other removal and with a million fetch lands it's going to come back eventually opponent plays a field of the dead well all right fervent champion part two go to combat attack ya pump each other hit ya windswept teeth go i mean two fervent champions is a clock misty opponent passing well crack windswept teeth grab a sacred foundry tapped untap <laughs> all right fervent champion three fervent champion tron go attacking uh grow you grow you grow wait you pump you you pump you wait uh okay hopefully we want them each to be pumped once because of removal hopefully we clicked properly all right yeah so get in with everything. Opponent. So opponent needs a Wrath here. Or else Fervent Champion Tron is just enough. Opponent cracks down to seven. And we don't have much else, but we do have this Phoenix of Ash to get it in the air. All right, does our opponent have land Wrath? There's a land. Do they have the Wrath? What a strange draw. This is not the... <laughs> the Javier Tron beatdown is not the primary plan of the deck. But, I mean, I guess that's an upside to playing Fervent Champions. Opponent passes well go to combat attack if our opponent has settle that's annoying but i think it's what we got to do pump 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 so pump 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 opponent pass one we'll grab a planes pass two we'll grab a forest play magmatic channeler planes go all right so opponent had some removal to not die yet misty cracks it land Supreme Ver- Oh! Oh! Phoenix of Ash! Phoenix of Ash! Oh, I think we have Exaxes. Because of those paths. One, two, three. Phoenix of Ash. Also not expected in modern. Uh, we will pump it. And for you. And a post comes it up! <laughs> wow! Our weird cards are paying off. Whoa, that was that was perfect. We held on to the surprise Phoenix of Ash. Our opponent did draw into the Wrath, but it was a little too late because then the Phoenix of Ash cleans it up. The Lancing game was from the past. Let us bump it. And uh, yeah, okay. Well, this deck's kind of kind of working somehow. Sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are Sunforging in... Ooh, all right. We are Sunforging in modern and... We're missing a Fervent Champion, but the sand actually looks fine. Giver of Roods into Stoneforge for Batter's Skull, and we already have the Sunforger for when we can find our our last combo piece. Um, hmm. Winds up teeth crack it. I think we just take a Planes. Yeah, that's fine. We'll take a Planes, Giver of Roods. Maybe some argument to getting dual land for Phoenix of Ash, but we need another land for it anyway, and it should be a fat. Ooh. Ooh. Uh oh. Is this the, like, Oops All Spells deck? Well, Stomping Grounds, untapped. Stoneforge Mystic. Get a Batter Skull. Yeah, hit our opponent for one. I think this is Oops All Spells, so I'm not expecting interaction. Also not sure how we beat this deck if we have... Is this a turn two win? Oh, it is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a hand. Oh, it's Belcher. Wow! The best Belcher kill in history. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, we are uh, officially dead. Wow, what an insane hand. Well, that is, I mean, 
that is the upside of Belcher. That um, that is upside of Belcher. That is why you play Belcher because you can sometimes do that. All right. So what do we have that actually fights this? Is there anything? Nine lives for sure. Gaddic Teague, Thalia, Firewalker doesn't matter. Graveyard Hate doesn't matter. Crate Maker unlikely to matter. Usually, it is exceedingly rare for a deck to have. Belcher sit on the battlefield and not have the mana to win with it. So we bring those in. We go down creature removal, which is just dead. Go down creature removal. Go down a helix. The helixes are not even that great. I guess ooze is bad. Ooze is bad. Magus of the Moon is bad. Hmm. So maybe we do bring in like crate maker or something, or maybe we keep the helix. Well, let's bring in. Okay, we'll keep the helix and bring in a crate maker. Run it like that. Well, that's an insane draw. That is... Wow, that was... That was an insane... Insane, insane... That's the best Belcher hand I've seen since this deck sort of became a thing in Modern, thanks to Zendikar Rising, MDFCs. Uh, this hand... So we're looking at, what, turn two Eladrami's call for Gaddic Teague? Is turn three Gaddic Teague enough? Or do we have to mulligan to try to find something faster than that? Yeah, let's mulligan. I don't think it's fast enough. Okay, well, this time I guess we'll keep. Opponent's keeping seven, which is concerning. We will put a Sunforger to the bottom. Well, we'll see how insane is our opponent's start this time. Land, go. Opponent starts on a tap land. Well, we will crack this for a planes. Untap. Prismatic Vista. Crack this for a forest. Manamorphose. Manamorphose. We could just draw into something good, or not. Eladrami Skull. For Gaddic Teague. All right, well, if you can kill a sister, you got us. Like, if you got turn two kill hands twice in a row, then good game. Our opponent knows it's coming now, but I think the upside of spinning to try to draw into something to keep us alive is worth it. All right, let's see it, opponent. Are we dead? Tap, lad. I mean, Simeon Spear Guide into a flurry of rituals could still get our opponent to where they need to be. Opponent, passing. Well... We will play Gaddic Teague. Arid Mesa, go. So as long as Gaddic Teague is out, our opponent can't combo at least. Well, crack Arid Mesa. Grab a Sacred Foundry tapped. Untap. Stoneforge Mystic. Get a Batter Skull. Stoneforge Mystic. Well, I mean, if Gaddic Teague dies, we very likely lose. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but we'll find out. Okay, Stoneforge resolves. We'll get a Sunforger. So we got every equipment we could ever need. Go to combat, hit ya. Yeah, get in, hit ya. Pass the turn. No bolts, no removal. All right, cycles of wilt. Shatter Skull. Thankfully, stopped by Gaddic Teague, so our opponent can't use that as removal. Silence would actually be an interesting sideboard uh, piece for this matchup. Like, being able to Sunforge out Silence. Could see that being pretty good. Opponent plays it tapped. Desperate Ritual. Simeon Spirit Guide. What do they have? They can't empty the Warrens. I'm very confused. Unless they just have removal for Gaddic Teague and haven't played it yet. Either that or our opponent's forgetting about Gaddic Teague. <laughs> and we're going to see a shame scoop in a minute. One, one of those two things are happening, I think. <laughs> Either we're dead or our opponent's going to scoop. I mean, because Belcher and empty the Warrens are nine creature spells with converted mana cost four or greater. Manamorphose. Okay. Cycles Wilt. Oh, this is all very strange. Recross Pass. Uh, what answers do they have? Oh, there's one, two lightning bolts. Okay. Is there any way we get out of this? So opponent's going to put Bolt on uh, bolt on top to Bolt Argadic, and then presumably proceed to combo off and win? Well, we will put the land to the bottom. Now, let's see what we draw. Giver of Runes, a bit on the late side. If we had that earlier, it would have been enough. Is there anything we can... So if we... Uh, if we Sunforge, we can't activate. It doesn't puff toughness. I'll play Sunbait Canyon. Hmm. How can we get out of this? Is there a way... Oh, it's just so expensive. So it's two to put into play, three to equip. We could sag the land to just draw a random card, but that doesn't seem super likely to help. We don't have that many cards, it would be a hit. Well, I guess we just play Giver of Runes. 
go to combat, hit our opponent, pass the turn. So opponent, deck has been stacked. Bolt, I assume, is drawn. There's the bolt. Does this mean we're dead? Blood Moon. Well, we will Stoneforge Mystic, put Batter Skull into play. Stoneforge Mystic, put Sunforger into play. Untap, draw, Temple Garden. Ugh, so we're still mana short. Well, okay. Wait, one, two, three. Equip our Batter Skull. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I think this works. I think this works. I think this is a chance for glory win. Attack, 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 attack. Hit our opponent. Sunforger. Chance for glory. Extra turn. Temple Garden. Untap. And kill you. Oh, oh, Sunforger for chance for glory. Pulls it off just barely. All right. Well, we survived that time. The Gaddick bought us enough time. Oh, this is, this is tough. This is real tough. So, such a scary matchup. <laughs> oh. All right. I, I mean, I guess that's what we got. It worked that time. We're on the draw this game, though. And as we saw in game one, Belcher can get some ridiculously fast hands. I mean, we died on turn two. We, we, <laughs> we just straight up, like, land giver rooms died in game one. Oh, this hand. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, do we keep it? It's got two of our best cards for the matchup. In Thalia and Nine Lives. However, we only have a single land. So if we don't draw another land, we're not going to be able to cast those cards. If we draw one more land, we should be okay. Like, these are our I win cards. This matchup might be so bad that we just gotta... We just gotta keep this and trust that we draw land in our first two turns, even though the odds are a little bit against it. Oh, uh, we could also re-roll and try to get more lands. All right, hmm. Ugh. With two lands, this hand would be great. We're gonna mulligan. We're gonna mulligan. All right, well, we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep. We're gonna put Skyclave Apparition to the bottom, and... We're going to hope we draw lands. <laughs> that is uh, that is where we're at. If we could draw lands, we got Gaddick and Thalia, which is exactly what we want. Oh, come on, deck. Show us a land. Show us a land. Opponents going to five, which is unsurprising. Belcher mulligans super aggressively for their nut draws. Opponent starts with a tap land passes. Sunforger is not a land. Well, Prismatic Vista go. All right. Come on, land. Come on, land. Tap land. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Show us this land. Give her of runes. Well, all right. Get a planes. Give her of runes. Oh, boy. This isn't ideal, though. Opponent, this could be the turn where we die. Tap land. Come on, deck. Give us a land. All right, stomping grounds. Untapped. Gaddick Teague. And now our opponent needs two... Two answers, because Giver of Ruins could fizzle the first one. Tap land for our opponent. And recross pass, okay. I'm honestly not sure if it's enough, though. Like, how does our opponent beat Gaddick with Giver of Ruins out is a big question. Can they beat it? They can stack bolts on top. I don't see a sweeper, though. I guess if they have multiple bolts in hand. Wait, how many? One, two. Ooh. So our opponent might have a bolt in hand and also the ability to stack a bolt on the top of their deck. Well, we definitely don't want Lightning Helix. Well, we'll see. Opponent passes. I don't know what our opponent's thinking about on our draw step. Thalia's good, too. It's not as good as Gaddick Teague, but it's still good. So we'll play Thalia. Go to combat. Hit our opponent for two. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, passes. Well, Arid Mesa. Ooh, is it enough? Is it enough? It's really hard to say. Let's crack this Arid Mesa. Grab a, yeah, I guess Sacred Foundry. Untapped. I mean, if they're gonna kill us, we're gonna die all the way. There's no middle ground. Fervent Champion, Magmatic Channeler. Get our clock going. Get it hit ya. 
Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Can we beat the bolts? Can we beat the bolts? Can Thalia protect us? Pass the turn. Pota untaps. No bolting yet. Interesting about it. Huh. I would have expected them to go for it there. Passes. Well, um, let's discard Phoenix. Get a couple of channeler cards. Eh. I guess we take Stoneforge. Metamorphose doesn't do much here. Go to combat, get in, hit ya. Stoneforge doesn't do a whole lot either. Is it time for the boltoning? Alright, there's the bolt. So give her roads, protect it. Bolt number two. So Gaddix down! Can Thalia keep us safe long enough to close out this game? The good news is we have a fast clock. Like, we can win in two turns, I think. So hit our opponent down to ten. I guess we run this out. Well, all right. We'll see what our bonus... The real question is, are we alive? If we get to untap, we should be able to win. Do we get to untap? Is the question. Opponent going to wheel now that they can. Make us discard. Everyone gets new hands. The good news is, unless our opponent has a ridiculous stack of Simeon Spear Guides, which they might, I don't know if they have the mana to win. So let's say if they have four Simeon Spear Guides... Plus one land, plus a land drop, plus Belcher, which I don't think they could stack that on top because they had to stack the Lightning Bolts. Well, I guess they could because they get to see all seven. Would that be enough? I feel like our opponent's just short on mana for winning. I feel like they get to win in two turns. The good news is, if we live with this chance for glory, now we're a thousand percent to win. Like, if we un... Okay, Char Belcher, but without the mana to activate it, I think we got it. I think we got it, especially with this chance for glory. It's just super over. Opponent passes, we untap, play a land, I guess it doesn't even matter, play chance for glory, get an hit ya, down, two, four, extra turn, we're not gonna die, cause we're not gonna get to the end of it, fervent champion, we could even get back the phoenix, but let's do the nice thing, just kill our opponent, wow, hoi, taking down Belcher, Whoo! wow, that was close, alright, sweet, 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 alright, much brew about nothing time we are somehow <laughs> going for the 5-0 with so with <laughs> sunforger of all things of all things sunforger in uh in the modern format and well let's prismatic fist to crack it i think we just hit get down giver of runes here get down the giver Wait to next turn for the Fervent Champion. This hand's okay. We got a bit of removal. We'll see what our opponent's doing. What it fails passes. Batter Skull. That's a, a minute away, I would say. Um, well, Arid Mesa. Crack it. Keep thin in the deck. Grab a mountain. And Fervent Champion. Get in. We could use a Sunforger. That would be our best draw. That's what we want here. Stoneforge to find it would also be fine. Well, get in and hit our opponent. Down to 19 past the turn. What if fails? Probably a Primeval Titan deck. Opponent cracks. Well, I gotta say, this deck has worked way better than uh, than I would have thought. <laughs> Even if we lose this last round, the well, yeah, definitely a Primeval Titan deck. The fact that we're 5-0 going into it is pretty impressive. Sunforger. Uh, Alright, well, get in with Fervent Champion. Magnetic Chandler is not the worst. At least it can draw us cards. So get in hit our opponent. Magmatic Channeler. Temple Garden tapped. Pass the turn. About it. Gotta be Primeval Titan, right? Some sort of Primeval Titan deck. Land. Dryad. So definitely a Primeval Titan deck. Bounce Land. Picks up Radiant Fountain. Alright, so we untap. Another Channeler. Oh, well, I think our best plan is actually... Do we even activate Channeler? What would we discard? Maybe we don't. We can just Skyclave Apparition attack for two? That's not much. I do think we gotta get rid of this Dryad. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just... Actually, you know what? Let's discard Magmatic Channeler. Well, we're not gonna be able to cast what we hit. Alright, yeah, we'll just... Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of Dryad. Sacred Foundry tapped. Go attacking. Hit our opponent. Back down to 17, past the turn. Castle Garenbrig, Summoner's Pack. So this means a Primeval Titan is coming down. And we don't actually have a way to beat it at the moment. Alright, Primeval Titan. Opponent. Yeah, so far so bad. 
Valica, Field of the Dead. Yeah. Well, we untap. Metamorphose. Well, Magmatic Channeler. Discard Magmatic Channeler. Take a land, I guess. Play the land. Metamorphose. Um, add some mana? Hmm. Well, I guess we got a Path Primeval Titan. <laughs> Opponent gets zombies. And, yeah, ship the turd. Definitely still a pretty fragile spot. Our opponent does have to pay, but if they have another Dryad, we are probably just dead to these Valakids. Amulet. Well, thankfully that's now and not last turn. Oh, they do? Okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. Valica, gonna kill our Giver of Roods. Oh, is there any possible way of winning? Oh, my God. Bounce land. Gonna kill me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not fast enough. So now we know what our opponent's doing. We have to try to mulligan into a into a game that, uh, into a hand that lets us, us win quicker than that. Talaria West. So is there any way we can win from here? I think if there's any shot, it involves us just straight up top decking. Ugh. Yeah. I don't think there is. Well, we got a top deck Sunforger to have any shot. Any slight shot. Channeler, and we will scoop it up. Yeah, so that didn't go super well. Ooh, oh, pretty evil tight It's going to ruin our 5-0. All right, what do we have in the sideboard that's good? Boil. Got to punish our opponent for playing those those dryads. Uh, voice Resurgence, probably not. No Mage Shepherd, not really. Tap four untapped creatures, destroy artifactor, and chat math so much. So we can bring in Crate Makers, I guess, to deal with Amulets. And then we go down Lightning Helix, Lightning Helix, Scavenging Use. Yeah, all right, try like that. So I think the best thing we could do. Either win quick, because our opponent doesn't have much interaction. That's step one. Just, like, combo off with Fervent Champion on turn three or something. Otherwise, Magus of the Moon and or Boil. This hand's just so fair. So we're looking at, what, turn two Stoneforge for Batter Skull? With Skyclave Apparition to answer something? Is that even enough? Like, do we keep this? Eh, I mean, all right. I, we're going to keep it. I don't know if it's correct or not, but we're going to keep it. Windswept Teeth, go. Skyclave Apparition can get rid of Amulet, which is something. We could also use this to get Stoneforger, which is... Or, yeah, to get Stoneforger in case we can find... Uh, let's see, so Stomping Grounds. We're going to need double white and double red. All right, so get a Sacred Foundry. Sacred Foundry tapped. Untap. I don't play the land, Stoneforge. And... You know what? Let's take Stoneforger. Sunforger. <laughs> Stoneforger. Uh, Sunforger, because it can't get boil. <laughs> it can get boil at its speed, which uh, seems pretty sweet. Like, if our opponent actually dryads, it should be insane. Opponent plays a tap land. Passing. We draw. All right, opponent discards. Manamorphose. Hmm. Well, I guess we cast Manamorphose. Um, white, red, another Stoneforge. Well, Stoneforge, Sunforge are into play. Prismatic Vista, go. Snow Covered Forest, Azusa, Telerio West, Field of the Dead. All right, that's not optimal. Well, untap. Oh, that's interesting. Prismatic Vista, crack it. Get another Plains, Magus of the Moon. And pass the turn. Opponent. Karn. That's annoying. Gruel Turf. Simic Growth Chamber. I mean, I guess we can actually Skyclave Apparition it, so it's not the end of the world. Or if our opponent takes down, get the Zeus and then just attack it. All right, going to take down Karn. See what they get. Walking Ballista. Well, that can get rid of our Magus eventually. About it. Passing. Hmm. Well... We will Skyclave Apparition, get rid of Azusa, attack down Karn, pass the turn, but Ballista's gonna get rid of our Magus, and then and then things become scary. Uh put it. Ballista X2. Gonna kill our Magus of the Moon. 
Yup. Unlock some mana. Teleria West. Gets the Summoner's Pack to set up for next turn. We untap. Well, play Fervent Champion. Equip. Sadly, we only have one red source at the moment. So we don't actually get to activate. Well, go to combat. Attack you. Giver of Roods. Pass the turn. Oh, no. They have the amulet, too. All right. Amulet. Oh, it's going to be close. This is going to be super close. One, two, three, four. So they get Summoner's Pack for Primeval Titan. Yep. Yes, Primeval Titan. Another amulet. Primeval Titan. Gets to double untap their lads. Ooh, boy. We might just be dead here. I assume our opponent can have two Primeval Titans going. We've already used one Mana Morphos for the combo. And our opponent is going to get zombies for days. Ooh. Our opponent's thinking over how they're playing this turn. Ooh, the dream might be dying. About it. Bounce lads, untaps. Yep. Floats a bunch of mana. Floats a bunch more mana. Transmutes. Four. Summoner's pack. Replays the land, untaps it. Yeah. Oh, they actually have the Dryad in hand, too. Dryad. So now we have to path the Dryad? Ugh. Summoner's pack. Primeval Titan. Well, gotta path the Dryad. Or we just get Valakuted to death. And now we have six and get smashed by Primeval Titans. Oh, if we had had one more mana, we could have got him so good with this Sunforger. We could have Sunforgered the Boil. We were so close. Opponent gets the Valica, gets the Hadweir Battle Vids, gets to make zombies. Five, six, seven, eight, not. Oh, we're going to be like just short of winning. Opponent, haste up. Two Primeval Titans, because, yeah, that's what happens when there's amulets. Vesuva copies Field of the Dead. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So close. Oh, we were so close to doing the sweetest thing, but it's too late now. Opponent. Yeah, opponent's just ridiculously going off here. So we gotta try to win the game, but I'm not sure it's possible, honestly. Opponent gets in. We take a huge beating. Untap. We draw the boil. Our pony has so many zombies. All right, let's think about this. So, so we have to win this turn. Okay, we might have a shot. We might have a shot. So, our plan is... Remove Sunforger, get a Manamorphose, cast it, add red, white, equip Sunforger, remove it, Manamorphose, cast it, red, white, equip it, remove it, for our last Manamorphose, add red, white. So we do draw the land, so we get to Sunbake Canyon, equip Sunforger, remove Sunforger, get Fist of Flame on Fervent Champion, equip Sunforger, Giver of Roots, Pro Black, go to combat, attack, hit our opponent to two, and then remove Sunforger, Get Kazool's Fury, cast it, target you, sack it, combo, combo, oh, Ponit did busted things, we busted him back, Ponit made so much power, so many Primeval Titans, but in the end, the Jake pays off, and we're still in the running for the 5-0, oh, well, we got to see the, I was a little worried, I was a little worried we wouldn't get to see the combo, because we've done some sweet things with the deck, but we haven't comboed. I was afraid it wasn't going to happen. We got it at the best time possible. The most perfect time possible. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we just run it back. See if we can get one more win. Um, well, okay. I think we keep this. We have a Fervent Champion. We have Sunforger. And we also have our Sneaky Boil, which... Who knows what that will do. Hmm. I almost think we got to play this Kazool's Fury tapped. Yeah, play the Fury. Pass the turn. A little bit of a slow start, but hopefully that's okay. Hopefully that's all right. Our main plan is to get our opponent with this boil. Opponent, bounce land. Picks it up. Well, play a Fervent Champion. 
play a prismatic Vesta. Go to combat, get in, hit you. Pass the turn. Four is for our opponent. Dryad. Oh. Oh. Okay. Bounce land. Pote it. Pass it. Do we need to path our own fervent champion? Maybe. It would get us to boil. Do we need boil? Opponent's going to be at six mana next turn already. Hmm. All right. Crack push Medic Vista. Get the planes. Or can we wait? It does really telegraph what we're doing. All right. Untap. We're not going to path it. We're not going to do it. Play a Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. We could also just get rid of the Dryad. That might be worth it. Hmm. Oh, it's tough. Tough, tough, tough. I'll get a Plains. Sunforger. Equip. Get in for five. All right. Well, do your worst about it. I have no idea if this was the right choice. Letting the Dryad live is scary. It does offer some upside as the game goes along. There is Primeval Titan. So we can blow up all the lands. Unfortunately, we drew the boil. It'd be so much better. Oh, no. It'd be so much better if we could be doing it. Ugh. Yeah. Gain some life. Opponent gets and hits us. We draw Giver of Runes. So we can blow up all the lands, but there's still a Primeval Titan. We can deal with our opponent's board. But then we still risk just dying? Well, I think we gotta deal with the board. Ugh. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of the Dryad. Sunbake Canyon. Pass the turn. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. Path the Primeval Titan. And hope there's not another one. I feel like, so you could boil and blow up the lands, but I don't feel like that wins with the Primeval Titan on board, because they rebuild it, we take so much damage. Now, if we get a chance to boil, like if they play another Dryad, then things become very interesting. Then it might be good enough to get the win. They just really have another one. Teleria West. To get Summoners Pact. Land untapped. Summoners Pact. For Primeval Titan. Primeval Titan. Make Zombies. Ugh. Yeah. So here comes the zombies. Opponent. Passing. Whoo, make us of the mood, but there's a titan. Hmm. How can we get out of this? Oh, this isn't good. One, two, three. Equip. Shock ourselves. Pass the turd. Well, we'll see, about it Has to pay for the pact. Reclamation Sage to blow up our Sunforger. Well, we will unattach Path Primeval Titan. Opponent gets more zombies. Oh, they didn't have a land. Alright. Wow, and they didn't blow up our Sunforger. <laughs> they chose no. Strange. Okay. Opponent has Dryad. Hits us. Down to five. Passes. So, okay, boy, it would be so much easier if this boil was in our deck. So we can boil the lands, but then do we still lose? That's the question. We have to double chump? So we boil away the lands, play Giver of Runes. Oh, that doesn't work. We can blow up all the lands, but it's not enough. Oh! We needed the boil in our deck. Ugh, not in our hand. So we boil, but our opponent has lethal damage. We can... Ugh. So I guess we have to equip. Mm, not what we wanted. Oh, and they have a bolt. All right. Yeah. Game. Oh, so close to the 5-0. I'm sure... I'm probably going to get yelled at the comments on some of the choices there. I don't know what the choice was. Like, what did we do wrong? Was there something specific we did wrong in that last round? What a weird close game. So there's probably some choice I could have made differently that would have improved our chances of winning. Oh, it is so sad that we had the boil in hand and we just couldn't get the timing to actually use it, unfortunately. Oh, well, I guess the good news is... Oh, I wanted that 5-0. The good news is the deck was sweet, and we have a 4-1. Oh, so close to the 5-0. But we get to open some, some treasure chests, so that's sweet. Um, Yeah, 5 chests, crack them open. Maybe it will redeem us for that last loss. We get... Ooh, Kenrith. Is Kenrith still worth anything? I'm kind of guessing it isn't, because I feel like they printed a billion of them. 
Yeah, 0.54 ticks. They printed a billion of them after everyone uh, freaked out. All right, well, that one's that one's kind of a whiff. Next up, we get Spelltwine. I'd rather have Kenrith. Bring back the Kenris. <laughs> Next up, Shell.Kyle. It is seeing a bit more play now that, uh, eh, 45 cents. Now that Mill is a thing, thanks to Zendikar Rising. Come on, two more shots for something good. Oracle's Attendance. Squawkward. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, one last chance. Can we get at least one good chess, Wizards? Come on, give us one. Give us one. Mastin Myers. Uh, currently an uncommon. <laughs> uh, well, the good news is the deck was sweet. The deck was sweet. Oh, we got to see the combo, and we were so close to the 5-0. So, so, so close. Well, still sweet. Still sweet performance. All right, be back with the wrap-up. So what did we learn this week about Naya Sunforger? And I gotta say, two big takeaways. One is, the deck is way better than I thought it was gonna be. We were 4-0 going into our last round, and just barely lost the 5-0 against Amulet Titan. So the deck actually worked. We took down a couple of the new Death Shadow Bills. We took down Uropile. We took down Belcher in a ridiculously close match. Amulet Titan, I still feel like I probably did something wrong in that last match. It's such a weird, hard matchup to play. Our deck has, is weird as well and has a lot of tricks. Not super confident I made all the right choices, so maybe, I mean, let me know. If there was something obvious that, oh, if I had done this differently, we would have won, let me know because I came away from that match with the feeling like it was so close and we had so many like tutor options with Sunforger and do we like go for the boil or do we kill the primeval titan first like we had so much stuff going on I'm not super confident I made all the right choices maybe there was a way we could have pulled it out but regardless we ended up going forward one in our league and we were so so close to going five and oh so the deck worked really well the other thing that struck me was even though the most exciting part of this deck is definitely the combo, like Fervent Champion, and we did pull it off eventually, Fervent Champion, equip, get all the metamorphoses, get the way to pump our creature, the Fist of Flames, eventually get the flag. we did get those combo kills once to win the game, the most impressive part was how well the deck worked as just this weird Sunforger value deck. That was what surprised me. Like, I assumed when everything goes well and everything comes together, we got Fervent Champion, we got Sunforger, we got four mana, like we should be able to win the game from that position and that was true what was surprising is all the other games we were able to win just by being like this weird sunforger deck like putting a sunforger on a fervent champion is a legit clock we were able to win by attacking our opponent we didn't really do anything with batter skull that was kind of strange i don't think we even had it on the battlefield a single time phoenix of ash was like sneaking and damage in the air big Magmatic channeler was really sweet in some games so the deck looks super super odd and it honestly is super super odd but even without the combo it was surprisingly effective i think being able to tutor up creatures with sun fortune with ellen robbie's call really sweet synergy chance for glory was an all-star like chance for glory is so sweet in this deck no one in modern expects chance for glory we use it to steal a win against earl pile beating a wrath and then untapping and attacking for lethal using it as like kind of pseudo combo finishers so i really like this deck it looks weird it plays weird it's got strange combos built into it. It's playing Sunforger. You spin around Sunforger and Modern. Like, everything about it is weird, but it actually works way, way better than I would have expected. So, it actually felt pretty competitive. The combo suite, the non-combo games are better than I would have thought. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's actually a fairly legit option for Modern. As strange as it sounds to be saying that about a commander stable like Sunforger. So, anyway... That's nice, Sunforger. That's better much improved for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed the absurdity. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.